pretty vocal about wanting Vontez here. What is it about Vontez and me? Well, I've spent a lot of time with him, obviously, in Cincinnati as both as a position coach and as a coordinator. And anytime you can add a guy with his talent and knowledge of the system, um, when he became available, it was very attractive to us. So it's uh, uh, he, he's you know he can he knows that the system inside and out. He can get us in and out of calls. I think some of the, the returning players are seeing the knowledge of the system he has out here on the practice field. So it's good to have him. How similar or what is what you're doing now to what you were doing back there? Have you changed much at all, or is it pretty much? Um, as far as when he was with us, it's, you know, 80% of it's the same, and we've added some things in the offseason. When you look at the landscape of the NFL and the offenses, we've added some stuff, um, um, both in the front and the coverage plan. So that, that those things will be new, but most of the stuff we'll, we'll have to remember. Does it help you as a play caller to be able to have someone who knows your system well enough to be able to implement kind of some new and creative things and has a background in it? Yeah, it's like getting a quarter. It's like having a quarterback that you've coached in there, so you can get in and out of calls at the line of scrimmage. You know, last year, you know, we didn't do that as much. We did it a few times, and I just felt like it was a lot for the guys in the first year of the system to put that added weight on them. I wanted to just kind of go out and play, but now in year two, uh, adding a guy like him and having another year into the system, the guys will pick it up a lot faster. Just completed a practice. Like obviously, there's you know no pads. And yeah. There's a lot of limitations to it, but. Dirk wasn't finding a lot of ton of open receivers, and right. there was plays being made. I mean, can you see already? Our, we, we got we got some players here and some pieces, and this is going to be no doubt. I mean, we're, we're, we've gotten a lot younger. Obviously, uh, we got some guys in the back end who can cover guys one on one. You know, the offense is going to make their share of plays. We're going to make our share of plays. It's we come out here and just to, just to limit the, the the corrections that we have to make each and every day. And it, and the install for the most part in the defense is over. So um, it's just getting the fine tunes of everything done. But I'm happy with where we're at right now. I'm guessing that after um, you know, no coach goes into the season expecting to have a have a bad year. Right. Um, did you learn? What do you think you learned about yourself and your philosophy and everything else about going through a year like you went through? That you, I'm sure you didn't expect. By far, my hardest year in coaching. But I, I, I just, I just felt like the the kind of players that we're looking for. We've added a lot, a lot of those guys um, throughout the draft and free agency. The guys that kind of fit what we're doing. Um, so those things, you know, right now in the NFL, everyone's, you know, hey, we're going to surprise everybody. And all these great predictions right now. Everybody feels great about their team. I'm just trying to get them better every day. He's smart. He's real smart. I'm, you know, he, from a rookie player with all the stuff the safeties have to know, uh, he's on top of it each and every day. So it's good to add him. Um, you know, when you're back there, as I stand back in the back of the defense, I hear him communicate. He doesn't sound like a rookie player. He sounds like a veteran player out there. So that's encouraging. How does um, Marcus fit into that safety group? He's getting in the slot a lot from the limited amount of time that we've been able to watch him. How's he going to fit in? Uh, well, we watched him a lot in his earlier years in, in, with the Rams, and I, I was always impressed with him um, at the nickel spot. And, and when he was available for us uh, to go in there, be a cover guy, understand the run fits, become a blitzer, he's a vocal guy out there, a great guy to have on your team really all around. But um, he's a perfect fit for me for the nickel spot, and that's what he's been working on. Guys, it landed linebacker where we haven't seen Brandon Marshall out there yet. Yeah. Between him and here and, and Lopez, and then the young guys, you know, your Mark Hills and your Moros. How do you like him? kind of the way that, that you've got kind of two waves there where you've got the young guys that can learn from the it, it, It's good. You know, Brandon's going to be new. Obviously, Vontez has, has been in it, and, and Tyre's been in it for a year. Uh, Markel and uh, some of the other guys, Amoro and those guys, they've, they've come along. They understand the little details of everything way better than we were standing here a year ago. So that, to me, I'm now talking about the fifth level things instead of the first level things, which is, as a coach, is what you want. That's awesome. a good point, too. How, from what you've been able to see, how are we? Montez, Tyer, and Brandon all gelling in terms of communication, right? You, know, you never know how it's going to be when you bring in new guys and yeah. that level of communication will be like. But early on, it's been like. It's been great. I mean, those guys understand what I'm looking for. Um, you know, obviously having Vontez here for the years he's been with me, he, they, he's saying stuff that they've never heard. And like, hey, watch this. Hey, watch. And now it's starting to build up with everybody. So uh, um, it's been pretty seamless. Obviously, Brandon hasn't been out there as much. But once he gets back and gets rolling, he's going to get a lot of reps in the in training camp. This offseason is a great opportunity to make a leap for those young defensive linemen. Yep. What have you seen from Mo, PJ, and 
obviously from Harden in that area. I, I, obviously, we're going to count on him this year to take a big leap. I always say that between the first and second year, he should be your biggest leap. And I just think as a rookie player, you don't know what the next hour's about. Like, hey, what's training camp like? Where do I stay? What's the week of the season like? So now they understand all those things. That's kind of to the side, and they can really concentrate on their job. So they're, they've are they really, again, just like the linebackers, have picked up the system a lot better. How was Mo specifically shown growth? He, uh, he, he, he looks str- he's looked stronger out there. He's moving a lot better. Um, he was a little, little bit limited early in OTAs, but uh, he's back out there playing at a high level. There was a lot of attention paid, obviously, last year from the pass rush. How yep. do you feel like you guys that? Well, we added some guys. We had some young guys. We had some guys in free agency. I think that are really going to help us. There's some guys that are, you know, like I said, uh, you know, we, you know, the three young guys we added in the draft, and, and Benson and Morrow, those kind of guys. Um, and obviously, the guys that are returning have to get have to uh, pick it up for us uh, that way. So that, that's a big emphasis for us um, throughout the spring. He's right where we're at. I, I know there's some reports where he's light. He's he, we we drafted Arden to become a third down rusher, and that's really what it was. You don't want to be a 260 pound slug out there. Uh, he knows exactly where he wanted to be weight wise. And his his strength and, and conditioning is, is a progress thing for him, right? You were in Cincinnati when they did the hard knocks out twice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, oh, yeah. I, I did it three times, really. Three, oh, three times. Yeah. What, what was that experience? I don't know, you just want to mention the possibility. What was that experience like? And what, was it a distra- people talk about it being a distraction? Was it or was it? I, I I really don't think. I mean, they do a good job of staying out of your way. You can see what what's kind of going to be on the show. Um, you find out a lot. I think the positive thing you find out a lot about your team and the coaches on the staff that hey, when the camera's on, you're going to be a different guy or a different player, or if you're not, because that's really after the third day, you don't realize you're so used to them having around that you just go about your business. I don't really pay attention to where the cameras are, where they are in the building. You just go about and coach the guys how you know how to coach them. And that's all you know how to do. Did you find last year that it was easy for you to go out there and be that same guy every day when you were guys were struggling or jumped? Like- Kick yourself in the butt a little well, bit. Well, it starts with me on the defensive side, yeah. so I got to make sure when I come in this building, I'm in. The, I was in the right frame of mind. So going through a year like that and understanding, hey, this is what it was like, uh, only helped me as a coach. So it's uh, it's something that you don't always want to go through having a rough year like we did. But obviously, uh, you start to learn how to build these things, how to build your lineup card, and what what it should look like, and how you envision it. So um, that's that was a, a positive for me. And I always tell the players, if you if you don't learn from failure, you're making a mistake. So you got to learn from what we did, and what we did good, and what we did bad, and build off of that in the future. Well, that was the pass rush last year. But what the improvements you guys made in the secondary? What, how will that impact? Well, they, we'll, we'll be tighter in coverage. I mean, that, that, the rush and coverage part of it always works hand in hand. If we're tighter in the coverage and longer in the coverage, or the rushers get there sooner, we don't have to be quite as tight. So those work hand in hand. Can you say with confidence? in the spring and that this pass rush is going to be where it needs to be or is that going to require more work and yeah work it's hard to tell we're not in any pads right now it's you know running game how are we going to get against the run how are we going to be against pass rushers i'll have a better feel once training camp gets going once these guys can do what are your early impressions of uh, cleveland and did you anticipate you talked about Arden kind of as a third down guy but that maybe a curl can do Cleveland is exactly what I'm looking for. That's the kind of guys we had, the Michael Johnsons and the Carlos Dunlop kind of guys we had in Cincinnati that are every down ends, that are big men, that can both rush and play the run. So he's exactly what we're looking for. Um, Max, he's, he looks like a, a Cadillac coming off the edge. He's long, he's loose, he's quick off the ball, and I think he's going to make big jumps here in his first year. And Bell is, is a guy who can – run. He can chase quarterbacks down from the backside. You can use him as a, a spinner, rusher type guy. And again, he's just developing as an end right now. So once we get into the pads, we'll have a good feel for what he, what he can do. Two more guys. As you, as you mentioned, this is a younger defense now. Yep. You don't have a Frosty Rucker mentoring your young D lineman. You don't have Leon Hall yep. mentoring Nick Nelson. Yep. From a leadership standpoint, are you seeing more voices, different voices, a rise in voices in terms of that I do. Even some of the newer guys that, that have been that are new into the system are saying that initially, because you don't have those kind of guys that kind of come from the coaches. So you got to understand, you, you'll start to feel as a coach when it starts to take over, and that's when you become a good team. When those guys become the they they manage the locker room, they manage the, the tempo in practice, and you don't have to say much. When you don't have to say much as a coach, you know you, the guys are starting to get the message, and you know you can hand it over to them. Abram got number twenty four here, and they don't yeah. have that to just anybody. Yeah. Well, what do you what do you see? He's got big expectations, big shoes to fill. That's what I see, and hopefully he can do that. Jimmy, how different has uh, being a DC here been? Obviously in Cincinnati, when you're there with Marvin and he's a defensive guy, I'm sure he has influence. Being here, 
here under John and all that guy, do you, you feel that you have more freedom? What, what, what's it been like? No, honestly, when I was with Marvin, Marvin really didn't interfere. He was more of running the team. He'd sit on, he'd sit in a lot of the offensive meetings. He, you know, he very rarely came in and said, "I want you to run this. I want you to do this this way." I, I could probably count twice in, in my whole time there as a coordinator that that happened. So it's very similar. Um, it's very similar in both places. Well, go ahead. How do you feel like Carl Joseph has responded to the fact that you guys didn't pick up his fifth-year mm-hmm. option, you drafted safety in the first round? How has he responded to that? What do you want to see from him? I, I think he's responded great. He knows he's, he's you know this will be a good year for him to go out and play good and and, and make us uh, give him a contract. Um, so it's that's the way the NFL is. It's the way it is for me. It's the way it is for a lot of the other guys. If you don't perform, it, you're probably looking for somewhere else to go. And if you do perform, you're going to get rewarded. So that's, you know, to me, it's business as usual. All right, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.